And my next guest is a passionate mountaineer, the first Arab woman to summit Everest, as well as six of the seven highest peaks in the world. Now Suzanne Alhubi is on her way to scale the seventh, Alaska's Mount McKinley. And get this, she's also an accomplished businesswoman, CEO of an environmentally aware travel firm that gives back. And she's stopping off here on her way to Mount McKinley to chat with us about it all. Hi, Suzanne. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So you are quite an accomplished woman in many different realms. Let's talk about your mountaineering first because it's very, very impressive. If you accomplish your goal, yeah. you will be the first Arab woman to have scaled Mount Everest and the seven highest peaks. Correct. Very, very impressive. How did you get started with mountaineering? Oh, it's a long story, but mainly it was a very decisive moment when I was in Africa and for the first time I saw the big mountain, Kilimanjaro, and I decided I want to climb it next year. And I did go a year later and uh, the journey began. And you were hooked. And I was hooked, exactly. So how did you then also start this travel company? Tell us about the company and how it gives back. Okay. Well, just because I was doing lots of different things in my life as a businesswoman and I was climbing and, you know, it was harder and harder for me to climb and take time off, I decided to put my passion into, you know, a small project as an, uh, a mentality that is always thinking about new I business ideas and initiatives. So I started it. It's the first adventure travel company in the Middle East. Uh, and that's a new thing. And at the same time, we have a commitment that 1% from our revenues, you know, go into uh, the communities that we visit. So, you know, leaving, obviously, not harming the communities that we're visiting and uh, leaving a good uh, footprint after uh, we visit. And so you are being honored today by Outward Bound yes. and you are also voted by Arab Business Week, one of the 16 most powerful Arab business women. You're clearly setting an example for women around the world, not just Arab women, but are there things that you would like to see change for women in the Arab world? Of course. I mean, the after the Everest story, obviously, you know, I just felt that it's not my story anymore. Everybody has a share in it because the feedback was quite overwhelming about how many emails and phone calls I've received about, you know, people seeing them achieving their dreams through me. And basically the message is very simple. You don't have to live it through me. You can just pursue your own dream. Uh, the, any uh, spiritual, cultural, uh, you know, um, society kind of perceived perceptions should not really define what you can or you cannot do and just go for it, you know. So, um, that's the message, basically. It's a great message for mm. women anywhere. Anywhere, exactly. Now, tell us, having climbed Mount Everest, what are your thoughts seeing the changes that the Sherpas and their families are fighting for in the wake of the tragedy there? Okay. Unfortunately, sometimes you just need a reason for some things to be uh, back on the surface again. Um, and. Um, Sadly, it happened because of, you know, losing lives uh, this year. It was like a very much doomed season on Everest. But I think that it's, um, it's a good reminder for everybody about, you know, the equality and uh, especially addressing the risk and the insurance for the Sherpas. Um, so you agree that things should change? For them? I agree that things yeah. should change, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Suzanne, it's such a pleasure speaking with you today and good luck. Thank we you. We will be rooting for you. Thank you. <laughs>